It is Pipe Friends. Pipe Strange Things here. John. Mm. Done just about got done with a bowl of luxury twist flake. And sometimes I get a sweet tooth and want a little aromatic, but I don't like to smoke a whole bowl of aromatic because you get down about halfway and start to get raunchy. So a long time ago, I invented, or I thought I did, <clears throat> take you some navy flag, some bullseye flag, twist flag, just whatever. You think that navy on it, vapor on it, anything like that work good. Fill your pipe up about halfway, maybe a little bit past halfway, and then put you a pinch of whatever kind of aromatic you like on top of it. Make sure the aromatic's pretty dry before you put it on there. And you get a little bit of that aromatic on top, and it kind of filters down through the rest of your tobacco, and the whole bowl smoke great. You should try it. I thought I was the only one that did that. I run across some videos not too long ago. I think it was, the page was called New Age Pipe. That's right. It's like a group of fellas that do videos individually, but they're on the same channel. Yeah, but they was doing that, and I was like, wow, man, I just, I've been doing that for years. They call it a, a parfait. <laughs> okay, all right. It's fitting. But anyway, I'm talking. I'm about done with this bowl. It's almost gone. It's good, too. It's twist flake. With a, had a little pinch of Eileen's Dream on top of it. That's some pretty good tasting stuff. Tastes like white chocolate to me. Remember back in the day, you used to have them candy bars called Zero. I think they was called Zero bars. Just white chocolate. Yeah, that's kind of what it tastes like to me. Mm -hmm. It's good. I just can't handle a whole bowl of it. But I ain't here to talk about just what I'm smoking right now. I believe that's just about cashed. But I had run into here recently quite a few instances of people just being very undesirable. I hate to say it, but sometimes to be healthy mentally, you have to be able to vent. You can't just be happy go lucky and just damn smiling all the time. Sometimes people piss you off. They do. Like the other day I went into the dollar store, had two cans of cat food in my hand and two dollars in my hand at 60 cents a piece. Run up there and throw two dollars on there and walk out. Cashier knows I'm going to do that. You know, she's always there and I go in there all the time. She knows what's going on. I'm walking up towards the register and this big old lady with a big old buggy come hauling butt to try to get in front of me and get me registered. And she, you know, I mean, she don't owe me the right to let me go on ahead and do the two cans of cat food and just throw $2 on there and leave. She don't owe me that right. But at the same time, I would, I wouldn't get that, you know, for her. But either way, people, I don't understand how some people can be the way they are. Just do people wrong. Do people wrong all the time. Don't have no conscience about it. Do it for money. Some people just do it for laughs. I can even, now I don't condone it, but I can even understand you do it for money rather than just a laugh. Because I worked at a Ford dealership one time. You know, I, I'm an ASC certified technician. I've since let my ASC expire because I don't work on cars no more. Don't want to, ain't going to. Don't even hardly even want to work on my own stuff anymore. I'm also ASC certified in parts, which is what I do now. You know, I'm the person that the mechanic brings this or that into. It's like, man, what makes this tick? What? How does this work? What? How do I check it? And this and stuff. You know, I'm good like that. And I'm good at what I do. I earn every nickel I make. I work hard. But I worked for a Ford dealership one time, man. The guy I worked for was just, man, he was dishonest. And I wasn't there long. I couldn't do it. I can't, I can't screw people over like that. 
Like, for instance, one lady came in with a coach, I think it's like a grandma or kid or something like that, and checking the lights on, and the car just running real bad, you know, acted like it was running out of fuel, but it was still running. Classic symptom of those cars, you know, map sensor already kind of knew it was, but hooked the scan tool up on this map sensor, manifold absolute pressure sensor. It measures the mass and the weight of the air, you know, going into your intake, make it spray, right? Anyway. They're notorious. They got two little vacuum lines that go up to it. Notorious because those lines get hot. They get real hot. It's little rubber hoses and they dry rot and they crack. And they start to leak air and then they make your computer think that the sensor ain't working right. But anyway, well, yeah, she come in. You could tell she wasn't rich or nothing like that because she was concerned about how much it was going to cost to fix. Now, I'm like, shoot. It ain't going to cost nothing. I can stick the vacuum lines on there. 50 cents worth of vacuum line. Hell, I got you. Dude going to pull me over to the side. Talking about, man, what are you doing? I'm getting this lady down the road. He said, we don't do it like that here. Your scan tool says she needs a map sensor. She pays for a map sensor. She pays us to put it on. It takes 15 minutes to stick it on there. We just kind of bolted up to the firewall. Got an electrical plug, two vacuum lines. That's it. Boom. Ten minutes at the most. Ten minutes drinking beer with one hand. <laughs> Ninety dollars an hour, minimum one hour. So that ten minutes, she would have spent ninety dollars on that ten minutes, plus the parts by two hundred dollars from the dealership. <laughs> Man, you can't do people like that. I don't know how people like that sleep at night. And then you got people that just. There's a Iranian store that opened up in the town that I work at called Uncle Pete's. Now, the guy's name this long, you know, mostly vowels. I can't pronounce his real name, but they just call him Pete. Good fella. I like Pete. I was talking to Pete before he even opened up the place. Already doing well. He got a gas station and a used car lot. And it works out of the parking lot of that gas station, but he does pretty well. <coughs> but he opened up a discount tobacco shop and slash liquor store. You know, you drive through, get you a mixed drink, go up in there. And he done seen me smoking pipe before. And he's like, I stock pipe, I stock pipe tobacco for you. He's like, there are a lot of people around here that smoke the pipe, smoke the tobacco. I'm like, no, I'm the only one. He's like, well, I'll stop for you. I'm like, man, you, you don't have to do that. You'd probably be spending a lot of money. To, you, know, you ain't going to make nothing off of it. You should do just doing it for me. I know what I like. And, and he did. He stocked up. He had a few, you know, $20 pipes, Chinese pipes. He had some new Carter Hall, which I bought quite a bit of Carter Hall from him. Captain Black, some uh, Borkham Real, a couple of different kinds of Borkham Real. He had some real cheap stuff, too, like a dollar a bag called 10 star 10 not t-e-n t-i-n 10 star look like cork <laughs> tastes like cork yeah, you couldn't smoke that but anyway i had that i was one of the first customers i told him i asked him i said man where are you from he said my friend i am no terrorist i am from egypt and i meant like you know you from mississippi you come over here from texas <laughs> Uh, okay, <laughs> but ever since then, man, I went up in there because it was convenient. Cause right on my way home from work, and, and, and the beer prices was so so much better than everybody else. Stopping there every day at work, give me a six pack of tall cold bud by the pack of cigarettes every day for a long time. And then eventually, he started having some family members working there, and eventually they started kind of running the place. And he was doing this and doing that. Uncle Pete, good. He don't stop. He work. He make money. He don't stop. But he, 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 I like him. And I like the, the young fella that was working the register there every day, too. For a long time, he and him got along good. We sit there and talk five minutes sometimes. He laughed and joke. I'd ask him about Because he was, actually came over here from Yemen. You know, spoke English, but he had that accent. He was funny because... He didn't take no crap. Somebody come up in there, man, we'll start some crap with him. He'd 
really funny. Like, he'd be like, why do you always have to fucking with me? <laughs> why do you always have to fucking with me? And I'd laugh. I'm like, dude, man, just calm down. We, we got this one. But eventually he started acting funny. You know, he wasn't as nice anymore like he was. And there was this, there was this old black man come in my store all the time. His name was Elton. Cool dude. You know, ain't got no damn sense worth worth nothing. But he don't mind letting you know that if he ain't. He just cool, man. He laughed, joke with you. He went through the drive through there one time. The dude had already had a sack out, I noticed. And he looked at me and smiled, opened that bag up where I could see it. And there was a bee in the bottom of him. He stuck that beer down in that sack and handed it to him. He said, it's on me today, buddy. And Elton was like, cool, man, drove off. Man, I was like, that ain't cool, man. What if he's allergic to bees and get out there on the road, get stung and kill him? And he run in the head on the mama and her baby or something like that. You know, you can't do that kind of stuff. That's bad, bro. He just laughed, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, they laughed too, ha, ha. One time, there was a couple of black girls running through the drive through and same time, there was a couple more coming through the door. She run, hollered through the window, hey, T.T., oh, that ain't T.T., that wee wee. Then he looked at me, he said, a oh, T.T., a oh, wee wee. Sound like peace, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> that tickled me, man, when he said that. I, you know, I, it was funny, but then one day, Right before uh, the COVID started coming around, everybody's threatening having to close up and all this and that. He told me, he said, this next Friday, we're going to shut the doors, but the drive through still going to be, you know, operable. And I went through the drive through that Friday because he told me. And I noticed I seen somebody go out, saw somebody go in. I was like, <laughs> I thought you told me they were going to be shut down, man, because I like to go in. I don't like to go through the drive through I like to go in and see what they got. But anyway, he's like, I lied to you. Just like that, all of a sudden. I said, I said, do what? He said, I lied to you. Just like that, looked me right in the eye. I thought that was strange. I said, dang, man, I thought me and you was better than that. He said, 